Hey guys, I'm here with Ming. He's an awesome dude. He's my friend, one of my coworkers, and he used to podcast. How's it going? From a more traditional Asian culture, if you will. So from what, by the age of five, when you start learning how to read or learning how to speak, yeah. your parents are like, go to school, get a good grade, and then get a good job, and then boom, boom, boom. You study, 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 study all your life, and then you go to college. And they go, you can't date, you can't go out, you can't dye your hair, you can't, I don't know, get tattoos or whatever. And then the next thing you know, you graduate from college, and then you get an undergrad degree, and you go, okay, I wanna go study some more, I wanna go get a master's. And by the time you graduate with the master's, you're about what, 25, 25-ish? And your parents go, oh my God, you're almost 30. You need to be getting married, you need to have a family. But what the fuck? That whole period between, let's say, 18 to 25, that's seven years, you're not allowed to date, you're not allowed to see anybody, you're not allowed to uh, hang out with opposite sex, mainly for females, I guess, for that matter. So that contradicts everything at least that the American society or, or the culture kind of talks about, right? So I just find it very, very interesting <laughs> in a dumb way. Yeah, in a very dumb way. And then these these kids, right? These Asian kids that they studied hard in school, they come out of they come out of school, they don't know they don't know anything about dating. They don't know anything about you know some people can be very evil. You know, we're all evil, right? But everyone has different level of evilness. Very I'm very cynical. <laughs> so, you know, some females can be really evil. They can jerk you the fuck around. And so, but you're, it seems like you're an exception though, right? Your parents were very loose. Um, yeah, they're, they're a lot open, I guess. Um, I'm actually fortunate in that sense. I remember growing up, there was a period when my parents were super strict. They were like, you can't dye your hair, you're not allowed to get piercings, I'll disown you. Uh, you dye your hair, I'll disown you. You get a tattoo, I'll disown you. I've gotten into fights multiple times in school, you know, I'll get in trouble. But then I guess after middle school, when you start, re you know, when you start rebelling against your parents, they go, okay, you know what? They're, they're a little grown and then they're also busy working. So I guess it's, it's uh, quote unquote half of, half of being open, the other half of being too busy to, to take care of you or to worry about you. So. Uh, and I don't think I was completely raised in an Asian, Asian culture. So that was fortunate for me. I got to experience, experience, I got to experience a lot of things that uh, maybe my peers or people my age with a different culture growing up didn't have, right? Because there was a lot of restrictions. Um, so you can say, I'm a little evil if, <laughs> if this is the topic he's, of the No, day. he's fortunate. <laughs> he, also, the thing is, Ming was a middle child. No, no, so, no, I was, I was, I'm the oldest. Oh, you're the oldest, never mind. Oh, so that, that brother that visited was yeah, the, yeah, middle yeah, the middle oh, child. Oh, he's yeah. the middle child, okay, interesting. So, but you had a little sister. Yep. So your parents probably were very strict on her, no, right? No, no. Completely opposite. So um, it was, my brother and I were about um, a year and a half apart. So we grew up very, very close in terms of just the things we did and also we went back to China for four years of school. It was just the two of us. It was, it was like parents here, we stayed with, we weren't allowed to stay with relatives. We had to stay with a retired uh, teacher. So that way we had to get like the full on uh, cultural immersement, right? And the cool part was uh, it, it really trained you in, in different perspectives because you see the cultural, dif you know, you see the culture differently because I was still, traveling back and forth. I, at, at an early age, I was still uh, coming back to the States every summer and every winter. Um, but when it was school season, we'll go back and we'll study and, and the environment's completely different. Um, but growing up, because I guess we were the only child or the only children at the time, my parents were super, super strict with m myself and my brother. Like my sister, she's um, 18 now, but she got her first tattoo when she was 17. But for us, even going to like proms or going out to dances, it was like a tough hurdle to get past with our parents. They're like, oh, you're dressing up like that. And then my brother used to get like fades on, on, his, uh, uh, on his hair. And then I remember he got in a big fight with my dad over that. So, so we still had some of that cultural element, but growing up being the oldest, you definitely take a lot of shit. You know, my parents, even now, my mom's like, dude, you're the oldest, you have to set expectations, you have to, you have to be the example for, you know, your, your brothers and sisters. I'm like, no, everybody choose to live their life the way they want to. 
just like I'm trying to define and figure out what I want to do, right? So I can lead by example by trying to figure out what I want to do, but my path might be different from what my sister and my brother want to do. So everything is an experience, just like how we met and you know we're going through all of this. So yeah, it's 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 interesting. Yeah, and I think my parents eventually just just gave up. They're just like you know they still try to try to get me to conform, right? And but I think eventually they just gave up. They realized it's just gonna go in one year and go out the other year, and then in between going out the ear, it's gonna build resentment. So they just realized that they just stopped trying to be strict on me but um the difference between my my sort of middle school high school years and years was that my mom you know bless her soul my mom really tried and so she was on top of me constantly like on top of me like i i could not get away with anything and so so i even felt it in high school like eventually when my parents were like hey um why don't you go talk to girls? It was like, it was probably the end of senior year. But before that, I was like, I... <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny? Yeah. You know? <laughs> before your I had the same shit. Like growing up, my parents were like, oh, study, study, study. You're not allowed to do this, not allowed to do that. And then once you get to a certain point, maybe your, I don't know, your, your sophomore, your junior year in high school, and your, your, parents, your parents will go, what the fuck? You're always bringing home your guy friends, where are all the females? Are you, they're like, are you gay? They're like, are you gay? They're, they're, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, but they asked me, they said, like, hey, why don't you hang out with some girls sometimes? I'm like, because you never told me I could. Yes. <laughs> so it's so contradictory, right? They, they, they mind fuck you for, for a good amount of time. They go, what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? You know, shouldn't you be dating by now? Don't you have a girlfriend or something? They're like, you just said, study, study, you know, get good grades. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. It is mind blowing. <laughs> and, um, Man, freshman year of high school, right? I was such a huge nerd, but there was this really cute girl who liked me. And um, I was just like in the mode. I can't, I can't talk to her. I need to study. I need to get good grades. So I kept ignoring her. I was such an asshole, but I wasn't trying to be. The and, one that got away. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Rachel. I just said her name. <laughs> but No last but names. It's all no good. last names. It's all good. But like, she really liked me. She, she would always flirt with me in math class. It was a funny math class, Maybe right? She wanted some answers. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she wanted some answers on the test. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. And I was, I was such, like a, such a good Asian kid. I was like, I tried to ignore all her flirtations it was really funny and i think that i talked to my parents about it um like um like years later i'm like did you did you guys know and my mom my mom acts like it wasn't that big deal she's like yeah next time you see her just like apologize to her <laughs> i'm like yeah <laughs> it built up wow. built up her resentment she probably she probably like hates every fucking guy because somewhere like, out there jerry there's a rachel walking around Hurts. Yeah. Because her because of me. Her. Because I traumatized her and I wasn't trying to. And she's gonna like be mean to ever got <laughs> <laughs> It's it's so strange. It's so the, strange. The, the, the norms and the cultures and all that. So the first time you, you you were dating a girl and you brought her home, how did that feel? Mm, I don't even remember to be honest. Um it, it was in high school, I would say. My parents were Open or, or actually no, let me put it this way. You know, it's 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 an Asian thing, right? They they go, okay, cool, you have a girlfriend now. You know, okay, you're not gay, okay? Right? <laughs> no, no disrespect to, to to you know gay folks or whatnot, but it's just a, it's just the Asian mindset. They go, okay, you're not gay, and then you start bringing your girlfriend home, and then you start bringing her to like different occasions or hanging out with you know your your relatives and your your sisters and brothers, and then. Um, at first, they'll take this uh, nonchalant approach, like, okay, cool, they won't talk to your girlfriend, you know, they'll be like, they'll be there, they'll be the superintendent, they'll be the supervisor, but they'll, they'll be present, but they won't interact. And they'll, you know, they'll kind of give you that, okay, you know, I see you, you know, give you a little check, but then they, they won't interact with your girlfriend, so you're, you're constantly guessing, okay, do they approve or disapprove this person? <laughs> it's so true. They'll, 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 they'll give you, they'll mind fuck you again. At another level, they go, okay, do you approve or disapprove of this person? And then, and then you continuously bring that person into to, to like family activities and so forth. And then, okay, they'll, they'll start acknowledging her. They'll, you know, when you go out to eat, they'll, they'll talk to her or, or they'll ask her more about her family, her, her background and so forth. 
And then eventually you kind of work your way. Okay, you know, we can go do activities together. We'll go on trips together. We'll go on vacations. We'll go shopping together. But it's another process of kind of, okay, now you have a girlfriend, but selling that person in to the family. I don't know how Asian girls or Asian girls do it with the Asian boyfriend or, or non-Asian boyfriend, but as an Asian guy bringing home girlfriends, it's, it's always that process. It's like you have to sell it to them. Or in the beginning, they, they'll go, mm, okay, cool. They, they wouldn't ask about her, they wouldn't question, they, they'll acknowledge it, they'll go, okay, cool, you're, you're present, but then they won't talk to her, you go, what the fuck? It's like, okay, is this cool? You know, do they like her or not? And then you give it a couple months or maybe weeks, depending on you know, how often she comes in. And then uh, afterwards, you kind of try to set up meetings, dinners, uh, activities together with your parents, and slowly they get to know the person. It's so fucking tiring. And um, <laughs> not, not just with women, but just with friends in general, my parents would be like, hey, do they have good grades? Or later on, if let's say it's like later on that in life, <laughs> not only do they have good grades, but are they smart? <laughs> that is very true, let me tell you. They, they go, okay, hey, what do they study? You know, or, or, are, they, are they good in school? <laughs> I have no, I, I mean, I, I get it, but this is going to get a little, you know, out of context a little bit. When you're in love, you go, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to measure this person quantitatively to say, okay, what's her SAT score? Uh, you know, what's her GPA? It's like, that doesn't really matter, right? Because it's at a different level. But then your parents go, okay, you know, does she get good grades? Uh, what is she going to college for? You know, what, what's her what's her parents' background? I, I get it. I get all of that. Um, they want the best for you, but then yeah. sometimes, it, I guess that's the difference between Western culture and Asian culture, or maybe other cultures as well. Yeah, I mean, before before love was free in China, it was arranged marriages, right? So there's still some of that in Chinese like parents mentality. They still want to kind of arrange a marriage of course they can't really say arrange. Story. But they always want to like kind of make you hang out with girls they think like are compatible with you. They'll, they'll, they'll find suitors. Um, I, I've heard about it where um, in certain parts or certain um, areas of China, um, your parents, your grandparents will actually go and print out a resume. Um, it's not your job resume, but it includes where you work, what your income is, um, how old you are, um, all these other elements that you kind of fill out when you're putting, putting, toge putting together the U.S. census or something. Um, and then, or your personal bio, for that matter. <laughs> and then they will go to, um, I don't know, the park or, or open areas um, and they would post them on boards as if it was job posting. Um, and then they would say, oh, so blah, 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 girl, female, um, 24 years old, working at this job, makes how much, um, looking for blah, blah, blah person, a suitor at, with this much income, has to be this person, height requirement. You're sh they're shopping you in this open marketplace and it's, it's parents, grandparents shopping their daughters and sons. It's, it's crazy. They're still trying to find the ideal um, mate for the significant other. I think the rationale behind it is, as Jerry kind of mentioned, is now that the culture in China, and I don't know too much about the culture in China, but now it's, it's a lot more open um, and more and more females are being empowered and they're going into work and some of them actually make more than their male counterparts. So a lot of the females are no longer having this mentality of, okay, I'm gonna be a housewife or I'm gonna stay home and, and just marry somebody. They're actually building their own career. So when you're doing that, you're kind of putting aside this whole family issue and the, and the parents get scared because they always think, okay, once you get past a certain age, I don't know, 30, 30 years or older, as a female, you're gonna be harder to kind of uh, sell off or find a suitor. So they start finding people for you. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Or I just remember when I was little, like when I was in China, I think like seven to 10, right? There was this family, my parents were really close with their family. They had a daughter that was, I think, four years younger than I was, four or three years younger than I was. And so we'd always hang out. And one time I didn't want to go hang out. I was just, I was just like, I wasn't, I'm an introvert, right? Even though I'm very 
animated on my vlog. I like my alone time, and I wanted to just have, have like an introvert weekend. And my parents got so mad at me. They were like threatening to disown me. They're like, if you don't go hang out with her, we're gonna disown you. <laughs> and I was like, because for years- You would've been married by now. Yeah, I know, I know. If I, if, if I listened to my parents more, maybe I would've been married with her. And it's kind of funny that that's like what I think about the nudging. It's no longer arranging, but nudging. They they want to nudge, but you know my parents hard nudged a little bit. I think it c comes down to the mindset of, um, you know, they always say it doesn't matter. It's universal, right? Your your parents always want the best for you. Yeah. Um, and in the Asian culture, I guess the idea is your parents want you to have stability, um, and they want to at least help or guide you to find that stability. It might be too much for, for those who are seeking more independence, um, but it is, <laughs> it is unique. I guess this whole topic kind of kind of came up when we're just talking randomly. I go, you know what? Isn't it strange when you have your parents telling you what to do for a good 20-something years of your life, saying focus on... Uh, your career, your studies, and then all of a sudden, once you hit a certain milestone in your age, boom, it turns, and then they go and say, hey, when are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? But you're blinded by all of that because you were never taught to say, okay, I have to take my life away from the books to go and interact with people on a social level. And some people are awkward that way because they were taught to just say, okay, you know, read and study from other people's experiences rather than say, hey, go and live yours. Um, so that's something that needs to change, regardless if you know, you're studying hard or if it's about uh, finding the right person. But I think the best way to kind of live, sure, you can read, you can learn about others, but you have to live it yourself. You have to kind of have your own experiences shared no matter who you're talking to. Um, that's always a good thing to have. Yeah. yeah, and one of my biggest advice, you know, people on my channel have asked me advice, and I, it's different between high schoolers and college students. When high schoolers give, ask me for advice, I tell them this: start interning places in high school mm -hmm. because you can play the high school card. You don't know shit, right? You can ask a million questions. No one's gonna judge you, and you can do knock on every door. Like I started interning in high school, and I learned so much. I was interning in the DC mayor's office when I was in high school. Nice. And it helped me a lot, it helped me get into good colleges. But in college, what I usually tell people who ask me for advice is, just like you said, go experience things. If you're eating alone, like try to just eat with someone, especially in the dining hall. Don't be afraid, it's college. Like fuck these guys if they like say, you can't eat with me. There's very few people who are gonna be like that, all right? And if they, they're like that, you just, just get your stuff up and go to another table and be like, hey, can yeah, I join you, you guys? You don't want to make friends with those people, yeah, right? Exactly. Why, why try so hard to fit into somebody who isn't open or fitting with a crowd that isn't receptive of other people? So just do you, like what Jerry says, you know. Um, if you're in college, you know, be more observant and also try things yourself because no matter what your culture is, what your culture is, I think a lot of it, you know, coming from an Asian background, a lot of no, you can't, no, this is bad, or they'll kind of scare you into thinking that certain things are, 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 are worse than what it really is. Oh, yeah. don't do this. Um, but then sometimes you just gotta get out of your shell, or else you're never going to. Or maybe the time you do get out of your shell, it's gonna be a shocker because maybe by then something that's small could be super impactful because you're maybe in your 30s or your 40s and you don't know how to react to it. So try as much as possible, nothing too crazy, but always put yourself in a situation where you can kind of experience, but always walk away learning something, good or bad. Hopefully it's, you know, the good part, but walk away learning something for yourself that you can grow and you can take away and pass it on. You know, that's yeah. always the best. Exactly. I always say, if someone, whether it's someone screws you over or you get into bad situations, it's better to get into those situations young, right? When you have not as much financial commitment, not as much maybe, maybe potentially personal commitment, whether relationship or whatever, you make those mistakes young. So if they happen again, one, you know how to deal with them and hopefully two, you don't make the mistakes again. Yeah, agree, completely agree. So that was a pretty deep discussion. It was pretty Dude, awesome. There's, I got plenty. Of yeah, I know. <laughs> so I definitely want to bring Ming back. We have a lot well, more to talk let's about. Let's let them decide. Yeah. If you want me to come more? Comment. Definitely. <laughs> you know how to do it. So you've seen, um, you've seen three of my coworkers already. You've seen Indy, you've seen Zeki, and you've seen Lizzie. And so this is Ming. This is another guy. I've been How's wanting to bring him for a long time. 
And um, yeah, let us know. What do you want us to talk about? He's had a lot of experience working in different agencies, like ad agencies and stuff like that. So if you guys want to hear his experiences there. And I'm, I'm open to it. You've also, um, I don't know if your girlfriend would be okay with it, but you've also dated like lots of different interesting girls. So I don't know if you, <laughs> if, you so if, if you guys want to hear him talk about those stories. So yeah, a lot more. Um, he also grew up in San Gabriel Valley. So he, he grew up in like, what, what some people call trailer trash Asian county. <laughs> so your experience. That's a first for me. <laughs> oh, you never heard that? No, no, no. Um, I think it was Just Kidding Films or Bart Kwong, one of those um, SGV Asian YouTube channels were like, yeah, SGV, man, we're the trashy Asians. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you were in like a better- I'm in between. <laughs> cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, do you have um, a, any sort of websites or anything you want to link? Or mm, A quick shout out, I guess. I haven't been doing this for a while. Uh, my mentor and myself, we started this men's grooming lifestyle blog. It's called Men Possible, M-A-N Possible. Um, you'll find some articles that we've written. We have did a little bit of podcast, I think 12 episodes to be exact. Um, we're thinking about bringing it back to life. So take it for what it's worth. Go check it out and then let me know your thoughts. Cool. So um, check him out. And then for me, press subscribe, leave a comment, press a like. You know what and to do. Yeah, please press the bell button so you can stay up to date with latest. And then we'll keep doing this. Yeah, we'll keep doing this. Awesome. Thank you so much, All man. Right, thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Peace.